What's happening fam? It's been a long time since I actually did a video so I'm gonna do this as a vlog style as I have things to do and I need to get you guys behind the screen updated on what's been going on. I'm actually working on the patrol, got some little things I need to do. Um, they're not really uh, major things, they're just stuff I want to do. Um, Weld knees into the front of my bar um, with some dimper dies and shiz. While I'm doing this, I'll give you an update of where the hell I have been. It's been a while, been a long time. I've just been super busy and well, I'll give you a full rundown of this year because it's gone so fast and I haven't really had the chance other than the normal social media posts, posting stuff up. Uh, long form content for you guys to see the crap hole that I get to do in my shed. So, ah, let's get stuck into it, hey? So right now I'm trying to find some sandpaper. Fuck knows where I put the sandpaper. But like I said, I have stuff going around everywhere um, and I'm trying to get things done. And that includes the patrol, the Hilux, you can see behind me, I'm gonna sniff. The old hay fever's kicking in. Um, and also I'm currently building a shed, so that's sort of taking my priority at the moment and my funds for anything that I would like to do in the near future. Uh, so sandpaper. This one looks good. We've got, what, 180 and 60, and I think that might be an 80 grit. We'll go with that. What have you been up to? We had the full drive show. I worked for ARB, and his name, uh, or the, the person I worked for, was Michael from Offroad Images. And also, I've been doing uh, video content for Salty Captain, Automotive Superstore, WD40, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Along with that, I have had no chance to actually take the car out because I'm still doing little wiring issues and locker issues to the car that I haven't had the chance to do. And then uh, along with that again, I've been trying to build a shed and that one <laughs> has really taken my time and my money up in the whole process of building a fucking shed. Uh, if you haven't, don't know what I'm sort of doing, this space behind me you currently see is about to get pulled out once I get the next bit of the shed up. I'm sort of joining a shed to a shed so I can put hoist in so I can actually work on the cars that aren't in that space that you can probably see where the car originally burnt down, um, and everything will be shifted and moved in the right spot. So then I don't have a, a tip of a shed, but it is organized chaos. Uh, worked for some people, some random people. Uh, the first one was Michael from Offroad uh, Images. I worked for ARB for about, well, for Michael, I should say, he's the one that employed me uh, for maybe three months off and on. I did from recovery gear to photography to um, POV of uh, people talking. I put sh what's it called? Get the word out. Anyway, yeah, so I was doing that. Um, that was fun. Very interesting. Someone is now calling me as usual. I start doing stuff, and who is it? Is Ben from Edge Twenty Four Seven? I need to can't take this one because it's something I might need. Hello Benny boy, how are you? I'm looking for an air fitting for my compressor at the moment. Um, didn't realize that ARB had changed their style from a five mil line to a six mil in the future. Uh, obviously I've got an older style line. Cannot find <laughs> just the line itself. Uh, I'm not spending $80 on a fucking air fitting, get stuffed. As you can see, it's currently getting hot, but I've got stuff like this, hopefully coming out soon. Um, don't know when. So yeah, back to that one. Doing some ARB photography with Michael. Uh, very interesting way on concept on how he does his photography. I learnt a lot in a short space of time working with him. Um, from like I said, I was pretty much mainly on a gimbal style uh, camera setup with a A7 series camera uh, with a prime lens. Uh, and then I was doing photography uh, whenever I get the chance. Uh, for Michael, I was driving. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, we were doing uh, piece to camera, that is the wording I was trying to think of. So sitting up two cameras, someone talking and doing like a dialogue on what, the, or a rundown on what was happening of the cars or what they needed to talk about. Uh, so I went from a couple of state forests in Victoria. I also went to Fraser Island for four days. That was an interesting trip. Uh, got to drive a brand new 79 series and a Rogue Hilux. And I must say, sorry to the 79 series owners, I liked the Hilux a lot better, I had more grunt also, it was a four-cylinder, the 79. Definitely think they're underpowered. Um, Cool-looking car, wouldn't buy one, uh, way too expensive. 
way too expensive. Don't know how that just moved, but anyway. Um, so yeah, and then it was a couple more things, and then Michael was actually getting his brand new Mark II 79 series uh, photography truck ready. So I was helping him film at Mark's four-wheel drive, uh, trig point, and ARB. So there's some interesting stuff that I learned from behind the camera on how to act and also film for high-end brands or companies uh, along with being professional as a photographer in general. So that sort of took a lot of my time up. Within that like time frame, I also have been doing uh, the shed, which is, like I said, it's been costing me a fortune uh, to do. And it's only just been like now that I'm sort of nearly ready to look at pouring. Uh, the weather has been pretty shit, so I haven't had the chance to really do it. And I don't have the money. Like, if you don't know how expensive sheds are, they are very expensive. And uh, yeah, I was like, fuck, how am I gonna do this? I'll maybe put a, uh, a plan, plan view, probably best description, because I try and explain to people and they're like, what? So you can go and see, you can currently see what I'm doing. Um, these are fill plates. I have had the dimple dies for these two, don't have the dimple dies for these. They're a bit bigger and more expensive, so I'm waiting on them. No, my hay is gonna play up. <laughs> and now I've started not gonna stop. Anyway, um, so these are going in the front bar. I've currently used U Poles um, Weld Proof Primer, which is why it looks copper. Um, I've just been sitting in this for a while now and I just haven't had a chance to really do it. I've noticed there's a little bit of a rough spot in one spot, but that's fine. But if I can get this done today, I'll get it welded in and I'll be happy. I'm also going to be cutting out the sliders as I need to fix some stuff on the slider mounts. As I would like them to be bolted in, not welded in. Well, I was just saying before, I was talking to Ben, as I need to find an air push fitting. So, I think my dad just pulled up. He's a uh, good company sometimes. I know he's feeling his own car. So, you have those days where you just want to get away from shit that you're doing. Oh, I hate going to kill me now. Anyway, so, that's that. Shed build is going to be a, hopefully, a 10 by five, it's bigger, big enough to put a hoist in. This area that you currently sell behind me will be fabrication space. You saw a Hilux in there, I'll sort of debrief on that one. And that is my first car. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna set this up as a, as a space that is tidy and neat so I can film in here and you guys get to see the cool things that I do. So this this wall here will get changed. This will all get pulled down um, and moved and it will be no more door. And I will have this as a feature wall. This side, all the shelving will disappear and I'll have my bench here. The bench up the back is gonna disappear. There'll be an open area up the back. So the car, when you drive him, will go all the way to the back next shed and there'll be a hoist. Okay, so I got that welded in. I'm happy with that. Um, may have burnt my top, sorry to Hoon TV. I was wearing that top while I was doing that. But anyway, um, let's talk about the car, what's actually going on there, because that's one of the things that sort of let me down uh, because I haven't had the chance to really complete it. I bought a new roof rack, T1, flat rack, which is what I wanted. I had to change the awning out because the awning I had on was a little bit too flimsy for the Victorian high country. New wheels, I sold the B-locks. They disappeared and they are at a, another guy who I'm friends with now, his name's Sam, got a really nice GQ, but a Safari. Uh, along with that, I had to do door cards, so these. Um, my door cards was, were absolutely buggered. Uh, I needed to change them. So, 12 volt wiring. I have a pie warmer, USB and cigarette lighters on this side my fuse box and two Anderson plugs. So red Anderson plugs for this. So it's never or not always on all the time. The gray one is for my fridge and that fridge is tied down. That whole box section lifts up and inside is my ARB compressor and some other little knickknacks that I need just in case. My compressor line, which is the one we're trying to find, that needs to go all the way down the seat and link into the back of that. Coming to the engine bay, yes, it is a TB, so as you can see, it looks like there's hundreds of lines, but this is the way I've sort of done it. The main power lines are these ones. Uh, for my fridge, uh, that's just a kit that I bought from Kings. These two are my power for the whole, I don't know, charging setup. So this goes to, come inside the car, inside the car, this. I don't know if you can see that. I've got some push buttons. So. 
on off switches. I've got a horn in the middle. The on off actually powers this whole setup um, when I, I'm in, it's in use. And then when it's not in use, I just turn it off so then it's got no power. The other one is a black one, I don't know if you can see that. That is for my winch. I finally wired, it, wired up an in cab switch, which is something I needed. My ARB locker uh, compressor and the locker is in there. Come over this side, I've currently got it on charge. I've been doing a heap of this. Uh, I worked with a friend called Ethan King, uh, King Motorsport Wiring. He does a lot of high-end cars. Um, and he had been doing this with me or teaching me what to do. So this one's my compressor, uh, fuse line. Uh, there's some other stuff I need to put on, but I don't really need it right now. We'll jump in here. As you can see, I've got wires galore, but I know what they are. Now, these are for lights for the roof, which I'm just gonna leave in there. They're not powered up, so it's fantastic. Um, had heaps of wires in here, which was ridiculous. Um, so I needed to get rid of most of them. So now that's all clean, I'm happy with that. Change the steering wheel. Steering wheel series one GU um, with some felt bullshit on it. This is from SCSS. I can never remember the fucking name, but anyway. But downside, no fucking horn. So I need to sort that little button out. So then I've got a horn. Um, someone said you can just put a, like a, a wire to it. Uh, don't know how the fuck that works. You come down below the seat, <laughs> compressor, uh, ARB twin compressor, so you can fill my tires up. You're probably like, why do you have them? Um, I don't really care if it's overkill, that's what I wanted to do, so too bad. Let's talk about these. These are from Black Rhino. These are called Tusks. They're in 17s uh, by Neg 12s uh, with New Mutant. Predator tires, these are actually, can you believe, all terrains. I very much highly doubt they look like all terrains, they look like muddies. Um, in the 285, 70, 17, so they're still 33s, nothing crazy. I wanted something a little bit different, but as you can see, there is no poke now. Um, but I'm considering taking these off because I've got no poke um, and I need scrubbies to finish off that. And same with the other side, scrubbies for this side. My front bar, scrub bar to go back on. Uh, so I need to figure out what I'm doing there. But in the meantime, I need to cut them out to be able to make them so they're boltable. At, at the moment, they are currently welded on. Uh, I don't like, don't like that whole welded on bullshit. In the car, I've just been buying little stuff like this. So these are um, some lightweight chairs because I need to try and keep room to a minimum. Uh, normally with big chairs, they're a pain in the ass. Had to put some wings in with some rope so I can hide all my shit down the side. I'm waiting on some uh, drawer runners with their locks, latches on. So that works, because at the moment they just keep hitting the door, pain in the ass. As I said, new roof rack. Uh, this is from tier one. Uh, I bought the wing and the side rails, already had the rack um, all bolted in. Along with that, I bought this from Croc Hinge. This is actually a hinge that tilts up to the side so I can actually get my max tracks off, because I hated them being fully bolted down um, and I couldn't get, them, get to them. Pain in the ass, that one. But, this little system here is a fantastic little system that I have had no issues with. Um, actually drove the car the other day, couldn't even hear him on the roof, so I'm happy with that. Wanted something a little bit low mounted with the roof rack, very low there, so it's a good little one there. The last little things I sort of need to do are my winch, which is down there for the rear. Um, everything else is sort of sorted. Uh, every time I drive the car, I'm just sort of writing a list of things that I can hear or can tell that's sort of playing up so I can knock them off. So when I go away, which is about two weeks now from this video coming out, um, everything's sorted and I'm happy to go for a drive and take the car wheeling because realistically I haven't been wheeling in a couple of, well, nearly a year and a bit now. And I'm a little bit nervous, but at the same time, it will be exciting uh, to get the car back out in its natural habitat. Let me go into this. This is my 1992 Toyota Hilux dual cab um, that I built with a friend called Rollo, or everyone knows him as Rollo, I know him as Matt. Uh, this we built in 2011. Uh, so this has been in my life since I first got my license. This is my first original car. Uh, and it is fully bagged, so bagged front and rear. And when I say front and rear, a lot of modifications to get that low. Front wheel tubs, uh, running on E-levels, rear wheel tubs, and full suspension parallel four link in the back, full custom parallel four link. As you can see, the car is needing 
a lot of work. I've left it for a bit and it's time to get this thing back on the road better than ever. So I guess the way I sort of explain this to everyone, the patrol is something where I learnt from, from fabrication to welding to fucking painting to all that kind of bullshit. How to put things, pull things apart, put it back together. A lot of that is then going to be put into this. My whole idea of understanding how to do stuff was that's a little bit harder to do. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit easier to put it back together, but I needed uh, a rough guide, I guess the thing was. So then when I did this, I could do this at a, a better standard than I did the patrol. So there's a lot I need to do to this. The tub needs to come off. The tubs need to get redone. My airbag system needs to be replumbed because I'm looking at getting from uh, the plastic airline fittings to do hard lines. Um, I've got a 2JZ manual uh, conversion ready for it and it's still sitting at my parents so I haven't had the chance to sort of bring it back yet. I want to do a Z notch, a body drop. The surfs have a rear wind down window. I want to try and do the same thing to that and I want to make this into a full blown show car. That's what I would like to do. I want to make it look way better than it is now and in the future I'll look at considering repainting it. Not sure what color yet but I have an idea on the style or theme I want to do for it, which is uh, something that you guys are going to go, what the actual fuck? So I'm, ha I'm going to be diving into this soon, do a little bit more four-wheel driving. This is on hold because I'm so trying to do the thing that's out behind and that's a shed. And I'll show you what it looks like. And it's literally taking up so much time and effort to try and get done. I'm at the stage now where I can sort of, sort of get it, the concrete poured, but I don't know when. Shed. I did have a little shed here that was all concreted, but it was sort of uh, starting to fuck up. So what I've got is a five by 10 meter long shed. Uh, this should be high enough and tall enough so I can put a hoist in. The aim is this shed will be cut out and then I'll drive all the way through it so I can drive onto the hoist. This section here will be like purely entertainment. So I'll set up like a couch and a TV and all that shit. And hopefully I can have all the stuff that's currently in there in here so that area the old shed can be for fabrication along with that i'll be cleaning this up so that's my old patrol trailer i'll concrete or i guess brick all the way on the outside to get the fence lines done redone and hopefully i can get all that sorted that'll be sweet so yeah once i've done that um as you can see this looks like a fucking mess i've got a lot of things to do to the house uh one of them is the garden the garden looks like a tip and you can see I've currently got sand down because Spike keeps digging it up and rolling in it. He's been rolling around this and sort of stuffing it up. So I need trying to get the grass to grow so I can maintain it. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. All the stuff that's on the trailer will disappear so then uh, it'll be a lot cleaner. And then I've got to look at doing stuff to the house and that's where things are starting to get really expensive for me. I know I need to re-stump the house. I need to get the roof done because that's fucked. Um, look at doing the pergola. Um, some electrical shit and then the front yard needs to be redone as well so I have been super busy which has been a pain in the ass for me uh, to not be able to take the cars out which is what I wanted to do and why I built the car in the first place but as we get older we realize time slips away pretty quickly and um, I just don't have as much time as I wanted then we go into smaller projects the things that I have laying around you can currently see what's this this is a barrier it's out of a patrol meant for the patrol, supposed to be doing a barrier engine build. That hasn't happened. Go to the other side. Got a little motorbike that I originally was gonna use the motor for, for the go-kart. Um, that's gone on down to the wayside. I haven't really had the chance. The other one is this. Got a mountain bike there. Haven't had the chance to go riding in a long time. Um, that was something I love to do every Sunday, but I just haven't had the chance to do it. Um, riding is my thing. I love to ride, and if that's mountain bike riding, motorbike riding, or riding on the road with my old motorbike that I don't have anymore. Loved it, loved doing that, but now I don't have the time to do it. The other one is this, the shed. It's a bit of a tip and I have like projects on projects going on. There's like stuff for brands I'm supposed to be posting and I haven't had the chance to post yet and I need to get on top of it. Then I go onto the GU. I've got a snorkel there for the GU and some other stuff for that, like rear tank and yeah, the list goes on. And this is what I mean. Life has been in the way uh, and I haven't had the chance to post as much as I loved to post. I was in a like a rhythm of posting like three days a week and that was like very strenuous. But now I've got my own stuff in my own place and as you can see a lot of things going on. Time is of the essence. If I don't get this stuff done, I just 
yeah, time slips away. At the same time, I guess it's my own fault that if I haven't been posting, um, y you guys are just following along because of the things I do, which is why it's called Kieran's Existence. Um, I will try and film a little bit more than I used to, and I have been, so then you guys get updated every couple of weeks or whatever it can be. Um, and then talking about a couple of weeks, as you probably knew from my social media, this space actually had three bonnets in here. Yeah, I have some videos on bonnets and how to do them, so I guess I best post them up. Uh, a big thank you to my main supporter, and that is Upol and Raptor for helping me along, fixing those bonnets and everything that I'm doing in the future. Uh, so if you haven't or don't know where you can get that stuff from, your local Repco or you can go to your local paint dealer. Uh, they should stock Upol and Raptor. I know Super Cheap Auto is also the same with Raptor, but if you want more of a range, Repco has most of it. So yeah, this is my update. This is what I've been doing. These are the things I've got to do. This is where I've been. Not as entertaining as uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing, but nonetheless, I thought I'd give you a rundown of what's been going on. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys and girls. I'm gonna try and change this outro to something a little different and I've got to figure out how to say it. Um, till next time, guys and girls, go justify your existence, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hopefully that one worked really well. That came out sweet. Um, I'm never going to be able to say that again real quick. But um, until the next episode, guys and girls, enjoy your week, and I'll see you guys around.